it's, it's more complicated than a lot of fixed-wing aircraft um, by virtue of the fact that you have an almost infinite variety of uh, ways of getting airborne and, and landing again. Uh, a normal conventional aircraft gets airborne at a set speed and lands at a set speed. With the Harrier you have uh, from zero, a vertical takeoff and landing, all the way through to fully conventional which can be up uh, around about 160 miles an hour. the aircraft almost wherever you want to point it, which uh, is extremely useful when you're talking about fairly close-in weapon systems, which need to be pointed in the, in the region of the target aircraft before you can uh, make use of them. Um, we can maintain control of the aircraft right down to very low speeds, and at extremely low speeds, point the aircraft, as I say, almost anywhere fairly quickly to get a missile or a gun shot off. took out an aircraft which was on the northern side of the airfield, a little light aircraft, and then the remaining two rolled across the airfield into the pan, which was uh, actually full of smoke and flames already at this stage. Mm. What did it look like? The airfield itself was just a great, well the airport buildings were just a, a very large area of uh, fire and smoke and dust. Uh, you couldn't actually pick up, or pick up very little detail in there because there was so much. Uh, the 8th of June and I've been on alert 5 on the deck of Hermes sitting in the cockpit um, I think I was probably asleep actually I tended to sleep quite a lot in the cockpit um, and I was scrambled to go uh, go over the islands and all I knew was that there'd been an air raid and it wasn't until I was getting close that I realized that there'd been an attack on some ships uh, in the area of Bluff Cove and we took over the uh, combat air patrol over Bluff Cove while they were trying to set up the rapier missiles. And we'd been there for about 45 or 50 minutes, I suppose, two of us. Uh, fuel was getting quite low. The carrier was quite a long way out. It was starting to get dark. Um, we'd lost the option of going into the tin strip at San Carlos because it was getting dark and there was no way of getting in there. There were no lights on the strip. Looking down, I'd noticed one of um, our small landing craft had been coming around from uh, Chesil Sound and heading up towards the, the rest of the ships which we could see burning in Bluff Cove. And in the turn I looked down and saw an aircraft about 300 yards short of this ship obviously going in to attack it. And I just yelled out um, that I'd seen something and dived down after it from about 10,000 feet. I saw the lead aircraft attack the landing craft um, and miss it. I then saw second aircraft running in for the attack and decided to take him first. Um, I was still accelerating down the hill, still about four or five miles away at this stage, and I saw him hit the back of the ship with, with a bomb of some sort, a very large explosion. So I knew he'd done a lot of damage and probably killed a lot of people. Uh, at that stage, I started to get very angry. Um, while I was converting onto his tail, the third guy came out from underneath me, so I dropped in on him initially. Uh, I was almost in firing range when I saw out of the corner of my left eye a fourth aircraft, uh, which would have been in a position to threaten me if I hadn't gone for him first. So I pulled the aircraft across to the left. And at this stage, we were down to probably around about 100 feet above the water, going much faster than the Harrier was ever designed to go. And fired, locked my, my port missile onto him, fired it, and the, um, the missile coming off the rails just threw my aircraft over onto the right-hand wingtip, uh, past the vertical, which is a hell of a shock. But the missile went straight up his jet pipe and blew him to pieces. Um, very, very little debris of any sort hit the water. It was very small bits. Uh, within about four or five seconds, I lined the other missile up, locked it onto the, the guy in front, the number three, fired at him and he'd seen the, uh, the first guy explode and turn, was turning gently back left 
to try and find out what was going on, I guess. Um, and I think he saw my missile come off. Uh, it makes quite a lot of smoke. He then broke right and tried to run away, which is exactly the right thing to do. But I was going a lot faster than he was, and I was fairly close. And the missile just took the back end of his aircraft off completely. It hit just behind the cockpit, and the back end of the aircraft disappeared totally. Uh, the canopy and the front of the cockpit then rotated through about 90 degrees and went straight into the water within probably half a second. Uh, he was down about 50 or 60 feet at this stage. Um, I felt great exhilaration at that stage, having got rid of two of them. I was then running through for the front two, um, one of which was the guy I really wanted to get because I'd seen him hit the landing craft. Um, at this stage, the, the second guy I'd shot down actually managed to get out of the aircraft, um, used his seat and the parachute opened right in front of me. And in fact, he nearly went down my intake. He went just over the left-hand wing. Uh, I then went forward for the, uh, for the remaining two who are now fairly close together running up towards Goose Green. Unfortunately, as I fired my second Sidewinder, the uh, head-up display, which has all the weapon aiming symbology on it, went out. So I just had a black windscreen, no gun sight. So I flew into about three or 400 yards trying to hit one of these A4s um, with guns and missed, unfortunately. Meanwhile, my number two had seen um, my two explosions, hadn't seen the, the target aircraft at all, and then suddenly saw another aircraft flying very low across the water with explosions all round it. And he thought that someone was firing at me and pulled for me to, to break up out of the way. Um, I, at that stage, ran out of bullets and so just pulled vertically. He saw me go up and realized that the aircraft he'd seen previously was a target. So he locked it with uh, one of his sidewinders and fired and got the third one. Uh, the fourth one got away to uh, take the story home. Uh, we then discovered we were desperately short of fuel and uh, spent 30 odd very anxious minutes on the way back to Hermes um, and landed with a couple of minutes fuel remaining.